Hello, welcome to my Final Fantasy VII Ultimate Guide. So, here I am in the Northern Crater, and obviously at the end of the third disc, you get to fight Sephiroth um, if you land the High Wind in the Northern Crater. If you go down this ladder, you can't really go back, so I decide to actually leave on the High Wind with the pilot. I run to the top right over here, I say go on, and he'll bring me back to the map with the high wind. First thing I like to do after mid eel is obviously collect my ultimate weapon from ultimate weapon by defeating him. So ultimate weapon has uh, a particular way of getting him to land at the perfect spots. So here he is on the map at one point. You obviously just run the high wind right into him, which starts battle sequence. He's pretty easy. Obviously, you can't use physical attacks on him because he's far away. Uh, you fight him about four times after Medeal. And once you finally defeat him near the Ancient Forest, then you're able to get Cloud's ultimate weapon called Ultima Weapon, um, which has zero AP growth, so your Materia is unable to level if you have it equipped. So after you defeat Ultimate Weapon once, um, obviously you could find him in random locations on the map. So the method of getting him to actually stop flying around is you land in a town twice, uh, you go into town twice, and then you run into him twice, and then you go into another town twice, and then you run into him twice again, and then he'll land at like an actual area. Otherwise you'll keep flying in into him, and he'll just keep flying around randomly. So, obviously the first place he stops is that waterfall. The second place he stops is, I think, uh, above where the ancient pyramid normally is. No, actually the second place he stops is mid eel. Okay. The third place he stops is Northern Crater. And the fourth place he stops is right next to Cosmo Canyon, which I'm flying over currently. And that's right next to the Ancient Forest, where you get Cloud's ultimate weapon. It's the best weapon for Cloud, it does the most damage, and I'm pretty sure the more health you have, the more damage you're able to do with Cloud's ultimate weapon. In addition to getting ultimate weapon, you unlock Ancient Forest. So Ancient Forest has slash all material in it, so that you can attack multiple enemies at once. And then at the end it has the Apocalypse weapon, which you could use for three times AP growth on the material. So here, ultimate weapon, he stopped over mid eel. Obviously mid eel gets destroyed by ultimate weapon when he you first encounter him. And Cloud, he falls into the pool of Mako in the wheelchair with Tifa. And you get to see Cloud's uh, history. So here I am fighting ultimate weapon a second time. So, let me fast forward uh, a little bit over to after I defeat uh, Ultimate Weapon for the last time. And I'll show you how to get the Apocalypse and also how to get Slash Ult so that you could train properly in the Sunken Galnica sub um, so that you could fight Emeralds and Ruby Weapon. So here I am obviously landing. I go in the town twice. And at the end of the video, I'll show you where all of the item purchases are, so that you can defeat Ruby and Emerald Weapon. So I landed twice, and now I'm just going to fly into Ultimate Weapon twice, and then I'm going to go into town twice again, and then fly into him twice more. And then he'll finally stop moving, and you'll be able to actually fight him again. So obviously the second area I fought him, after the, near the waterfall was near um, Nadeel. So the third place you'll fight him is the northern crater at the top of the map, nor where you fight uh, Sephiroth. He flies all around, so you'll just have to run, fly around, and fly into him. And then the last area you fight him is obviously near Cosmo Canyon, where you get Red 13, uh, where you see uh, Budenhagen. You could obviously give Budenhagen the huge materia to unlock Bahamut Zero as an optional uh, summon um, to get the 
huge materia, you get the sunken leader sub. You could do it by saving Coral from the runaway train, which is Barrett's hometown. Um, you get another huge materia in Sid's rocket by entering in the four digit code properly while you're on the rocket in space. And then you get another huge materia next to the Phoenix egg doing the simulation war. You obviously lose it on purpose. You go out the door to the left, you fight the dude, and then he'll, uh, after you defeat the last dude in the simulation war near the Phoenix Egg, then you go downstairs and you talk to the dude at the table. So obviously here I hit uh, Ultimate Weapon a second time after going to the second town twice. So obviously he flies right to the Northern Crater, the third place you fight him. And now let me just fast forward to the last place that you fight him, which is near Cosmo Canyon. So here he is over the Northern Crater, and you just fly into him here. Obviously, um, for the limit breaks, um, for Cloud, I'll show you how to get Omni Slash, which is his ultimate last uh, limit break. And then for Barret, for the Emerald Weapon, I like to keep Anger Max and Satellite Beam. Um, because Catastrophe isn't particularly good. Uh, so, ultimate, ultimate weapon. Here's the third time you fight him. Let me fast forward to the last time you fight him. In regards to limit breaks, uh, Cloud, you unlock more limit breaks with him, such as Meteor Rain here. Um, they have different level sets. So the first set is Braver and Cross Slash. Braver, you unlock Cross Slash after you use Braver Limit ten times, and then to get past Cross Slash to Blade Beam, which is in level set 2, you need to defeat 80 enemies, specifically with Clout. So to do that, I like to use the Ifrit Materia on uh, the enemies near where you see the Turks in that cave after you fight uh, the huge uh, Beta Snake in the north. You just go to the north area near that rope that you climb up and near the Elixir. Actually near the whatever, the materia. So, so I just defeated Ultimate Weapon for the last time next to Cosmo Canyon and the Ancient Forest. I recommend just doing it a little bit later because you could just train on the octopus in the sunken Gelnika sub after, um, from like level 50 to like level 79. So here is the Ancient Forest. I'm gonna land over here in the grass with the high wind and then run up and enter it, and I'll explain how to get the Apocalypse for three times Materia growth, in addition to how to get the Slash All Materia, so that's a little bit faster uh, to train on the Sunken Galnica versus the Four Octopus to level your Materia and to also level Cloud. So you press A or X on the flies, and then you could actually leave them closer to the pods over here, but essentially you just Grab the farthest one away, and then you grab the two closest ones, and you'll be able to time it um, without even having to place the flies closer, and you just hop across. Uh, you hop across here, and right now you're next to, that's the slash all material there. So this fly, you just place it, hop across immediately, and you grab the frog and throw it onto the pod right here, and then you stand on it and it'll shoot you up next to the beehive up there. After about 10 seconds, you grab that, and then you have to walk a little bit close here, slowly. Not too close, it doesn't matter if you get caught. And then you tap A or X, and it throws it in, and you grab the slash all materia. So you run to the right afterwards, and what you're gonna do is throw the frog over here, and then that'll shoot you up on top of the the tree here. Uh. So, yeah, obviously you grab this fly far away for the third area and then the fly close right here and you throw it there and you can hop up this thing up here. So you're able to run all around up here to grab the Typhon Materia and the Minerva Band, but it's pointless. So I'm just gonna skip right ahead to the last area. Um, you just have to 
like toggle around the trees. You make like a a horse a horseshoe, and you you loop back down. So here's the the final puzzle. You grab this one fly here. You throw it into this thing, and then you just hop up immediately. Grab the beehive. And you're gonna toss it into the flower here. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab this fly and then hop back and go and grab this fly and leave it right next to the tree. You have to leave it specifically close to the tree. Otherwise the frog won't come out of the tree stump. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab this frog and you're gonna hop onto this pod with it at the same time and wait about 10 seconds and hop across with the frog. So you grab this frog and you're gonna throw it into the slide po blast pod here and what you're gonna be able to do is hop across and grab the apocalypse weapon which has three times AP growth in the three slots at the top for a cloud. So you grab the apocalypse right here and then you grab the now that you're finished with the ancient forest, I'm going to head over to Junon and I'm going to hop into the sub. I'm going to press uh, circle or B to go underwater and I'm just going to go horizontally across to the other island and I'm going to go into this little hook right here, this little indent next to the golden saucer near the sunken Galnica. Obviously the one dude uh, near where you to part with the high wind, the soldier in that locker room where you do the special, he actually talks about the Sunken Kelnika. So you can save here. I'm gonna switch over to the Apocalypse for three times. It says triple right there, so that means three times material growth for those three slots right here. So I like to level HP growth from Cosmo Canyon, which I'll show you at the end of the video. Barrier, which you get from Rock Town, which I'll show you at the end of the video. And uh, four times, two times cut. And then also, uh, slash all doesn't matter to level. So, while you're fighting these octopus, obviously you slash all on cloud, you use four times cut with Barret, and then you use cover with Tifa, because you limit the amount of damage you take, and then by about level 86, you can one-tap them all with cloud slash all, and then you... So, after you hit level 95, head over to Rocket Town, and you're gonna buy the Peace Ring right from here, which you'll need later for the battle arena. So you grab this real quick, equip this to Cloud, and I'm going to arrange my items for the battle arena, and mostly for a ruby weapon. I'm going to use uh, Hyper, which causes fury, so you get limit break a little bit faster. And I'm going to show you the items that I use for the battle arena, so that you get 32k uh, battle points, and buy Cloud's Omni slash limit break, which you need to defeat Emerald and also to defeat Ruby. So here are the materia that I like to use for the battle arena. And then here is the equipment I use for the battle arena. You land here at Coral and you're going to head over to the shuttle and go up to the Golden Saucer on the left side. And there's a particular way. So essentially, you buy a 30,000 pass, and then you run in and out a few times until you see the guy at the top. Here I am landing at the Golden Saucer. So there's a save point there. What I do is I talk to this guy, I buy the unlimited pass for 30k, and then I run in and out of this door to the left uh, quite a few times, and then eventually you'll see a guy randomly spawn one time when you run out. So you'll be able to buy uh, battle points from him which you could use to enter the battle square unlimited amounts of times. So here I am running in and out, and there he is right there. You gotta make sure you don't run back in, otherwise he disappears. But you can get him to spawn again. So you run back here, and you exchange Gil into GP. So you could buy 100 GP from him, which uh, generally will be enough at level 95 to get Omni slash Bateria. So I like to say, use GP here to save. So you say you're stuck, you'll pay, you don't move, you go to the menu and save real quick. 
Because if you lose, like, the first time, you can just reload your save. So I'm gonna head over to the battle square. Here my item uh, ordering. Uh, you have to use Cornucopia, Maiden's Kiss, a little bit right here. At the top of the staircase, you could obviously click on this machine, go to the next page, and you can see the Omni Slash option. Championship belt also increases your strength, but that's kind of pointless. Okay, so I like to use Cloud in the battle square. You have like a six or seven round battle. I like to use Slash All. And then around round two or three, I like to use wall and regen. So sometimes you get status effects at the end of each round, like uh, that will make you smaller. So you can use cornucopia to cure smallness. You could use maiden's kiss to cure frog. You could use eye drops to cure uh, blindness or sadness. You could use soft to cure the 30 second petrify and basically that's about it everything else uh, gets covered by the equipment that I showed all right so the battle arena I like to use counter attack in it it has about six rounds sometimes it'll break your summon materia your magic materia your item usage it'll make you small it'll turn you into a frog it'll put your character to sleep many different status elements. Um, so the amount of points you get from the arena varies greatly based on the slot roll. So you'll need to do the arena quite a few times. But if you use uh, wall and regen before your material goes away, then you should be pretty good. And counterattack and Cloud's ultimate weapon. Uh, helps you to defeat all the enemies. And I, I always uh, just finish the round, and then you'll be able to uh, do it. Some of the rounds are just unwinnable, which I'll show you in a moment, but overall, you'll be able to basically win more often than not at level 95. It takes me about 20 hours uh, to be able to be Emerald on Xbox One um, and reach like level 99. It takes about uh, two hours to go from level 76 to level 95. So I managed to get um, 32,000 uh, battle square points in a little bit. You just keep re-entering quite a few times, and obviously the most you get is about 10,000. You go in a few times. So here, here I am losing. So they put my character to sleep, and I have Berserk, so I'm unable to, to really do anything. I can't use items when you're in Berserk mode, when you're red. And yeah, sometimes it just ends like that. So I managed to get 39,000, so I'm gonna go buy Omni Slash. which puts it in your item slot. You go to the menu, you go to item, and you select Omni Slash, and use it on Cloud, which teaches him his last limit break. So you go to the limit, you go to set, and you select level four, and press yes, and then that sets his new limits to Omni Slash. You leave through the station, and now you can fight uh, Emerald, now that you're level 95. So the material I like to use for Emerald is HP plus and W item on Cloud, so he has 999. I use Underwater and that other one for him, and I use Barrier and All for Tifa. So that's the equipment I use for each of the characters. The reason I only have two materia on Cloud is Emerald uses something called Air E Tam Storm and does 1111 damage per materia you have equipped. So if you have 999 health, and you only have two materia on. When he uses it, you get a 777, and you can use all lucky sevens, which does 150k damage versus Emerald. So here I am at the Junon. I, you run into Junon, run all the way west, and after I beat Emerald, I'll show you how to fight uh, this ghost ship before you fight Emerald. 
And for the last uh, bit of damage, he has 6,600 health. So you need to do like low level damage to him. And then you hit him with Morph, which you could get at the Ancient Temple only. So you gotta make sure you don't miss Morph. It's a yellow materia. And obviously I just damage him with like fire too, twice. And then uh, for the last attack, you use Morph on him, and you'll be able to uh, switch him into a guidebook, which you trade at that guy in Calm. And he'll give you an underwater materia, which lets you fight Emerald for longer than like the 20 minute time limit. So you need to have the underwater materia equipped, otherwise you won't have enough time to fight Emerald. <laughs> So there I just hit him with that morph as the last attack. And I'll show you how to get here after I fight Emerald, but overall, that's how you get the guidebook right here under item. It says guidebook. And that's what you exchange with the guy in Kalm, K-A-L-M, next to Midgar, uh, in order to get the underwater materia. And obviously the, the items I have equipped the materia and equipment I have on each of the characters is very specific. So next to Junon, uh, which is obviously where you go to travel to fight Emerald and also to get the underwater materia beforehand, you just go down and you uh, swim right into him. Sometimes he'll be just randomly swimming around or next to the Gelnico, uh, or right here. And what you do is essentially, you're just gonna drive right into him and you'll be able to beat him. Emerald's an optional boss in FF7, and you need to be at, le at least like level 95 to beat him, otherwise you won't be able to beat him. He obviously comes out of the northern crater when Sephiroth... He comes out of the northern crater when Sephiroth...
lucky. to calm again and you just fly over to calm and you use the the earth harp you run over here you go up the staircase and you reward uh, pointless kind of thing so you give him the earth harp you trade it he'll give you master skills master summon and master magic you need to use uh, Master Magic and Master Summon against uh, Ruby, otherwise you won't be able to beat him. And then after you beat Ruby, you exchange the Desert Rose with him, and you'll be able to get the Golden Chocobo from the Chocobo stall, as long as you have it unlocked. And the Golden Chocobo, it could go into deep water, it could go onto the mountains, um, it could go into the North Crater, all over the ice, and you could go to the top right of the map to naturally get um, Knights of the Round Table, in addition to uh, going to see Vincent's mom, which you could see with uh, the sub. Her name is Lucretia, and you could also um, go and get optional HP, MP, exchange materia, um, and you could go into get Vincent's ultimate, I think, limit break uh, from that one sleeping dude in the middle of the map. <clears throat> so this guy right here, he actually talks about the sunk Del Nico. He's like staring into the, the fog. So after you run into Junon, you run all the way to the left over there, uh, you go through that wall which leads you here, and then you go to the left over here, and you run all the way to the left, and you'll be able to get over to the underwater reactor, which is where you train on the ghost ship with Morph uh, to use the guidebook. 
So you run all the way down to the left over here, and this will lead you to the underwater reactor. You could only do this, obviously, later on in the game. I love how these people have these abilities. Um, it's like supernatural. The amount of possibilities you could do. So you go down this ladder. You hop in here. And you run to the end of this hallway. And you'll be able to fight the ghost ship. They have a cool dolphin there, uh, shaped like uh, Tifa's hair. And they have a cool shark here. So right around this area, um, you just run up and down until you fight the ghost ship. And you could uh, morph him like I showed you before the emerald fight. into. So here's the materia I like to use uh, for Ruby. Obviously uh, Tifa, you're gonna go in with only like 2,000 health. Whoever has the most health is 95% of the time the person that's gonna get stuck in whirl sand, so you have to get lucky. And here's the material I use for Cloud. You have to be level 99, otherwise you won't be able to beat him. Here's the order of my items. You gotta use a Hyper on them, make sure Tifa has less health. And here's my current stats and equipment. You can view the equipment at the bottom right. Uh, for the ruby fight, you essentially uh, fly the high wind into near the gold saucer, and you'll be able to start the fight. Alright, so here I am ready for the fight. So I'm going to fly over to the golden saucer with the high wind, and that's ruby right there. So you fly into it, and then you start the fight. So. I recommend obviously saving before you fight him. He'll hit you with that. Um, I like to use uh, Cure, which will leave enough health for Tifa to die, but also Cloud still survives. Just use an Explosion and then Dazers on Ruby. Because if you have two characters alive, then he'll use Boreal Sand, and then it's restart the battle. So that's basically the best way to start it off. The dazers don't work on him the first time, but I like to use dazers and X potions on Cloud, because anytime you get attacked, um, you can freeze Ruby for a little bit, and then you can use the X potion on Cloud. So anytime he has the tentacles up, you get him with dazers, and the tentacles aren't allowed to attack either after you with dazers. So I like to use Knights of the Round Table on his tentacles, and also Omni Slash, um, but I prefer to use Knights of the Round Table and save the Omni Slash as like a desperate way to get rid of the tentacles in case he gets hit me twice. So, Knights of the Round Table. So, Knights of the Round Table. This is actually super important. Like, I'm not joking around here. It, it actually does matter. Uh, it does about like 150k damage, which is enough to get rid of the tentacles, uh, which can cause uh, Fury, they can cause Frog, they can cause all these different status ailments. So, anytime you get rid of his uh, tentacles. I like to use X potions and dazers again. But he just happened to use uh, tentacles again here. So anytime he uses the tentacles, just throw a dazers or freeze him. You get the dazers from the octopus on the sunk Galnico where you train, like I showed you. And then use uh, Knights of the Round after you daze him. Um, which will give you some time to uh, cast wall and also regen um, in between while using X potions to heal up. And then also you save Omni Slash for the tentacles. And then you use the only thing that damages Ruby is Knight's Crown Table. Um, Omni Slash doesn't work against him, so it's a waste of time. So you gotta time it, and then also use like elixirs or turbo ethers, which you could steal from the 
Yeah, so I like to use turbo ethers, X potions, also lasers. You have to watch out for that attack, and in addition to that, you need to watch out for his um, the Shadow Flare, his Comet too, and he casts ultimate against you. So sometimes you'll just get unlucky. But if you have wall up, you should be. Uh oh, it's a little bit better than the gen. We need to make sure both of those are up. And then, once possible, you use Knights of the Round Table after dazing him. And you'll be able to get the tentacles to spawn again, and then uh, get some more going on. So you just need to make sure your MP and HP are back up. Because it costs about 170 MP to summon the Knights of the Round Table. And that's the, the basic strategy. So here I am uh, defeating Ruby. Obviously, he nice to run again because the only thing that you use to defeat him on both his tentacles and on him. And then you could also use Omni Slide on tentacles. Worst case scenario. So I just defeated Ruby, which gives you um, the Desert Rose, which you could exchange in Calm for the Golden Chocobo. So after you beat that optional last boss, you can obviously go to this waterfall here and land, and you can see Vincent's bomb. Uh, you could go into the top right of the map to go over to uh, the Knights of the Round Table material, and you could go anywhere on the map with the Golden Chocobo into those optional mountain areas. And also, uh, you go to the north and you can watch this optional cutscene uh, with Eris's mom and Professor Gast. In addition to uh, watching uh, Lucretia, Vincent's Bombs, uh, optional cutscene with um, Vincent. So I'm going to fly uh, to the north of the right hand continent to go to Calm and exchange the Desert Rose uh, for the Golden Chocobo. If you haven't uh, gotten a Chocobo yet and you happen to just run past the snake, which I doubt you did, after the Chocobo farm, then what you could do is you have to go to the Chocobo Ranch and unlock it, but I'm pretty sure you had to get the Chocobo. I didn't because I know how to like time it, or how to defeat the snake to get by without the chocobo. But I'm pretty sure everybody captures the chocobo. So you don't actually need to race um, and train and breed all of the chocobos to get the golden chocobo. You just need to beat Ruby after Emerald. See so right there it said the stable's full, so I'm going to go fly over to the stable. Which is right next to this place. So here's the Chocobo Ranch, you just go in here and you're able to unlock the Chocobo farm. You could also get the Chocomog materia, which has two forms, um, the Fat Chocobo and the normal one, Chocobo Rush. The Fat Chocobo just randomly sometimes summons, like 10% of the time or so. It looks way better. So to get uh, Chocobo Stables, you go and speak to this guy on the left hand side over here and he'll unlock the stable. And then after that you go back to Calm and you'll send your Golden Chocobo and you speak to that dude, the prior dude I just spoke to, and he'll give you your Golden Chocobo uh, to ride.
after you rent out a stall from this guy for 10,000 gil. You go back to Calm, you get your Golden Choke Bow. Um, essentially, and then you go and speak with his grandson in the same place right here. And he'll give you the Golden Choke Bow to ride. So you have to make two more trips. It's pretty simple. So you go up here, you talk to the Golden Chocobo, you select, uh, select. <laughs> and your, uh, Chocobo will head over to the stall, a new technique learned. So you fly back over here, and you do some, like, tribal incantations. And you say, ride and choke close to this dude, and you pick your golden chocobo. And you could go anywhere on the map with it. I like to go here with Vincent in the party, um, so you can see Lucretia's cutscene. I think there's something else you could do. I think you defeat like seven enemies or something after talking to this person, or after talking to the minor dude uh, who's sleeping with the golden chocobo on that mountain area, and then you get like Vincent's like ultimate uh, either weapon or limit break. I don't particularly care. It's not really interesting because there's nothing you could really do with it. So here you see the cutscene. This is Professor Gast's second wife, um, and how he makes Sephiroth uh, as an experimentation. I know, obviously, Professor Gast also dates Aerith's mom, Ifalna. So you go over to Nibelheim here, and uh, you can see an optional cutscene with Zack and Cloud by going into the Sephiroth mansion which is where you get Vincent as a character from the safe. The safe to the left over there. But if you go to the right over here, you go and click on the beaker and you're able to uh, see an optional Cloud and Zack cutscene. So Cloud actually uses Zack's sword at the beginning of the game and uh, he has a metal arm, like all the other people who get shot in the hand throughout the game. Because that's like the whole point of video games, you just get shot in the hand and people kill you for no reason. Alright, so here's the optional cutscene by clicking on the beaker. You're able to view it, which is kind of cool, with Cloud and Zack. You could also go up to the snow village up here. And you could watch uh, videotapes with Aerith's mom. She lives in, like, the, the snow town. Also, the snow town, once you land and you go into that area where you place the flags, you could actually just keep running to the right and you get into an optional cave. You just have to follow and keep running to the right. So right here you play the, the tapes. You could also read about the Cetra, or the Ancients, in Sephiroth's library. And you play each of the tapes here, and you get like a, a Resident Evil vibe. 
uh, from these uh, game developers. This room also looks like Dine, uh, like the little turret room in his desert area. So it's like they they talk about like engineering and stuff. Pretty cool guts. So this game's also on the iPhone, uh, so you can download it as a mobile app like FF9. And here are like all the item areas where you get all the items. So at the top right over here, uh, I'll show you the items after this. You go to this island with the golden chocobo, it's the only way you can get onto it. You can't fly into it or anything. Since it's in deep water and it's a mountain. You go up here, and you're able to enter the cave. You're able to get uh, Knights of the Roundup here, which is pretty cool. It's kind of pointless because you already beat Ruby and Emerald. I just do this after I beat both of them. And you already beat like uh, Sephiroth in like one hit, so that's also pointless. They just didn't make the game longer. I know they're making FF7 Ever Crisis on iOS. It's for like in September of 2023. Maybe that'll be fun. I know they have FF15 Pocket Edition on iPhone. So in Cosmo Canyon, you can buy HP Plus and MP Plus. You can also buy status ailment items similar to Coral from this guy right here. And then you also get the HP plus, MP plus from the guy on the top floor over here. I like to do this early game. But obviously you could level them with Apocalypse. In Rock Town you buy the Peace Ring for the Battle Arena. In addition to, I think, Barrier from over here, Barrier Materia, to level up your wall, which is really important. And you can buy status ailment stuff from this person early. I like to buy a lot of hypers. 